Okay, so over at the block now, at the, at the engine stand, I've already put in the lower shells. As you can see, these shells all have the groove in it and you've got to line them up as well with the oil feed. The bottom ones are like that for the crank and the top ones are actually smooth, apart from number three, the middle one, which has uh, the same again, top and bottom, this style, so you need to put that on the cap. As well as, as you can see, I've already, I've already put the lower thrush washer bearings in there as well. So now I'm going to just drop some oil into these shells and uh, very carefully drop the crank in. I tend to use like a heavy oil, like a 2050, something like that. When I'm doing engine building, you can also use proper engine assembly lube. It's just that I seem to be finding it quite hard to find actually here in Portugal, some assembly lube. So just, like I said, sticking to the old fashioned uh, 2050. Now when you put in the crank in, again, you know, you've got to be very careful with these thrust bearing washers, not to dislocate them, for them to fall off. There you go. As you drop it in. All right guys, so as you saw, you have to remove the trigger wheel to put this in this old block because it was actually fouling on the block with the trigger wheel. Make sure it rotates, as you can see, smoothly. Let me put some more oil, some more oil here in these areas where the main caps go, the big end, the main, sorry. And even though you shouldn't, even though you haven't got the top shells on, it should, you know, rotate quite smoothly with no sound as well of the dirt. Always rotate it round. It's moving free as you can see. That's perfect. And also check for the end float and there's none. Okay, so now let's put the caps on. So yeah, as you put these in, you might have to give them a little tap. Make sure you line them up always. I'm just nipping these up here. I'm not putting any, any kind of torque at all. So every time you put one on, make sure you rotate the crank to make sure it rotates freely. And also, the most important thing here is actually one, is to feel, and two is to actually hear. See if you can actually hear any dirt as you're rotating. It should be silky smooth and quiet, which it is. Perfect. All right, so with the torque settings, uh, apparently there's two types. If you've got a 12 pointed bolt, it's a one time use. If you've got a six sided bolt, you can reuse them. They're not stretch bolts and they're only to one setting. So I've checked that and it's about 48 pounds foot. So get the torque wrench out, start in the middle. and work your way out.
And one last bolt. Okay, so now rotate it again, make sure it's all smooth still, which it is. And then I'll just double check, make sure there's no issues, they will click. All right, so now that we've done this, rotate the engine round. So as you can see, I've actually got the PD studs in it. So I'm gonna have to get this cut down by about 15 mil. So let me remove these, because now the next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be checking um, the piston rings for the end gap to make sure they're all to spec before we actually put uh, the pistons in. Right, so what you do is start off with piston one, ring one, then you get the piston and you put the piston in, make sure you get it all even, then we'll measure it with a feeler gauge and see what the gap is. It should be actually 0 0.3 is the gap. Anything smaller, we have to open it up. So what I like to use is an old piston and you kind of push it down, get it as even as you can to that kind of level there like that. But make sure you've gone down about over an inch almost to there and now we get the feeler gauge out and we'll measure the end gap right so i've got the feeler gauge here that's 0.3 let's just measure okay so it's yep perfect this feeler gauge actually has two sizes on it, which is this bit here and the slightly thicker bit. So I've, it fits perfectly with the 0.3, the 0.5 doesn't fit. So that is ring number one for piston number one, it's perfect. Now, another thing with the piston, as you can see, I've put the rod on already on this piston, it's gonna be number one. Also make sure that there's always, if you look on the piston ring, it says top on it, so that's obviously has to go to the top and also make sure you clean because these are not new pistons you clean all the carbon that might have built up here inside the piston as best as you can with carb cleaner and a, and a brush not a wire brush and just kind of get it as clean as you can so that's what i've done already so now we can just put the rings on and then continue all the way across on all of them so the next step what i wanted to do was actually gap the piston rings check them I've checked them, I checked the first set, went to put them in the pistons, they don't fit. I kind of overlooked that, that I needed actually a set of special piston rings for these Wozner pistons. And you also have to measure them as well because there's a few thicknesses. So I've checked them, so it's there, the top one's one mil, the second one is 1.2 mil, and then the third oil ring is, three, is in three parts, but it uh, basically adds up to 2.5 mil. So they're in order. They could take a few weeks, unfortunately. So this is maybe gonna hold the project back a little bit. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press on with the heads and actually dismantle it, take all the cams out, take all the followers out, drop that to the machine shop so that they can drill out the holes from, from an M11 to an M12 to fit these studs. Also, I'm gonna work out how much I need to cut these PD studs, but I'll go into more detail with that in a minute. First things first, let me just put the oil filter housing on let just dip this up with a 14 mil spanner. Also, always make sure you put like a little copper washer, a fresh one underneath that. So there you have, so that's again, to recap, this bigger one is for the VDO. They come in two gauges, a zero to five bar and zero to 10 bar, it's a 10 bar one. It actually says it written here on this thread somewhere, you'll see it. That's for the oil temp and this is your pressure. Should be a white one. I've just put this blue one here for the time being. Uh, but I will sort out a, a fresh white one to put on there. So now the next thing to do is to remove this oil filter bit here, because this is for a, uh, a non oil cooler one. Didn't have the oil cooler in. Just, there we go. You shouldn't do this with a spanner, but because obviously I'm not gonna be using this anymore, I can just un unwind it with this and damage the threads. I don't really care. So that just literally just screws out. So you can see the difference here. This is the one that actually takes 
the oil cooler on it, the standard oil cooler. I may add, or I probably will need to add afterwards, a mole cool oil cooler. I do have one of those. Uh, it's in the UK, uh, but that can kind of go on afterwards. So yeah, I'm just going to tighten this up. So I may as well move forward while I'm waiting for the piston rings. It could be a few weeks before they arrive. So I want to get as much done on the block as possible. So I've prepped and I've cleaned and I've painted the alternator and the bracket water pumps, a new one. That front uh, crank seal plate is cleaned up and ready for a new gasket and a Victorain seal. Also, I've already mounted up the rear main seal as well. So that's all fresh. So yep, just gonna put these bits on. Also, I've got plated hardware. Uh, this stuff's already done in this color because it's not gonna be seen. But all the other bits will actually be actually going to get anodized in black because I want the whole engine to be black, rocker cover, inlet manifold, the whole works. It's just going to be like a little stealthy kind of uh, satin black engine and gearbox. All right, so let's uh, crack on with this and get this water pump bolted on. So that's pretty straightforward. So next to go on is going to be the alternator bracket. And this is like the non-AC kind of eight valve style bracket, which sits a lot, lot lower, gives extra clearance. If I do want to put throttle bodies or I, I do have a plan to do something else. So it gives me more space. If I need to mount something else, I can. I'm going to change this pulley and put a clutch type so that then at high RPM, it takes the resonation out of the belt. It won't flap around a lot more because it's just going to be tensioned with no, with, without that normal tensioner. So the ABF doesn't really like to be tensioned rigid. If that makes sense, it does start to damage the bolts and the wood drift key in the crank. Here we go, a little bit of gentle persuasion, and then this actually takes one, two, three, four, five, but you only put on three, because I think two actually go where the cover goes. So as you can see with the cover, I'll just put the cover on here so we can, I can get this, a gauge of what it's going to look like there. So it's, yeah, okay, so that one and that one, those those two there then don't get fitted on. So I need to fit that one and this lower one. So next is the wood is, all right, so next is the bottom crank pulley. These are really hard to find, it seems at the moment. I can't seem to find the new one anywhere, actually. I thought I did find something in uh, Germany. It was stainless steel, but it was just, didn't seem to be worth the extra cost. Luckily, I found one that I actually had with the wood drift key in perfect condition. Then talk this up. What I tend to do is actually the front part of the bolt I'll put locked tight, and then on the back I put a bit of a bit of oil so that it actually lubricates the friction. When you're talking it up, the bolt has actually got a bit of lube here. What I tend to do is actually screw it in, then drop just a little bit of oil here as I tighten it up. As you guys can see, I've put a bit of Loctite on the end of the bolt and then put a little dab of oil around here and it'll just work it in. So I've got my special crank uh, locator tool, which is basically the hammer, a hammer with a plastic handle. That's important to be wood or plastic so it doesn't, you know, you don't damage the crank, the bore or anything else. And also make sure you're aware that you're away from the oil jet as well. And this is it, this is 200 Newton meters. So that's all, all done. And I just verify that it still rotates around nice and smoothly, which it does. That's amazing. That's really cool. So now I can turn it back around the other way. Now, the head, I've stripped the head down. And in this little box of goodies, I've got a, an aqua blasted cover. And also I've got a set, a pair of Shrik 268 cams in and out. Uh, these are the cams I'm going to be running to start off with, as well as also I have a, a vernier pulley on it as well. So I've gone as far as I can go with the block due to the piston rings. So I've kind of built it up a little bit, as you guys saw. I've also stripped the head down off camera, uh, took the cams out, took the hydraulics out, dropped the valves out, all of them. Uh, I did it in another video, if you guys should check out that video as well. And what I've done is now I've dropped that to the machine shop so that they can replace the valve guides, the valve seals, as well as skim the head 
I've also given them a flywheel so they can lighten that as well. And the most important thing is to actually drill out the heads so that I can fit the PD uh, head studs which are an M12 compared to the standard M11. So I'm hoping to have that back by the end of the week and hopefully by next week I'll have the head built up, more of the block built up and maybe the piston rings might be here, maybe not, let's see. It could be something that could hold me up actually for a few weeks unfortunately. But I do have other stuff to get on with on Project Freebie so there'll be loads of content coming. I've got the seats to be done and getting trimmed. I've got electric windows to be done. A few got still little kind of bits to keep us busy, as well as I'm taking it to a few shows this Sunday and the following Sunday. So you'll have a little show report as well. And I'm gonna change the wheels and the rear lights on it as well to make it look a bit more presentable. All right, guys, I've waffled on enough. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, it helps the channel. It helps me massively. Ding-a-ling-a-ling, -a -ling -a -ling. click on the notification bell and be safe, guys.